Thank you. Um, pretty simple, pretty, pretty quick. Um, N through Z doesn't really show a whole lot of complications. What it does show is, really, that? OK. Um, so let me go ahead and switch over to my overhead, and we can get started on them. For those of you who missed it, we are recording. Okay, and which means please, if you're not, haven't already, yep, go ahead and turn off your cameras. And I will pin myself so that I can see what you see. There we go. And see if I can get the focus a little better. Ah, all right. Um, so, I'm doing four nib with time, but I will remind you that uh, Batard and Bastardas typically are anywhere between five and nine. So four is my version of this. Um, it is entirely up to you uh, if you want to make the nib width higher. Uh, and in fact, um, it often is. You will see in Drogan's book, and again, I'm not showing directly out of Drogan, but if you look at Drogan's book, you will see some really neat ornamental stuff, and it's really fun. I'm keeping my stuff to the basics um, to keep it a little bit, well, make it easier to teach in this case, uh, since we're doing it online. Um, so the letter M we taught um, as one big long stroke. The letter N can be done in one stroke or in a couple of different strokes. Um, we'll do it the longer, the more stroke way here first. That front tail I talked about, bring it down, over, and up. And if you want, have some fun with that. Um, you can even pull the line here. And instead of starting back here, you can start in that line. I like to pull my ends below the baseline. Um, I think it just draws attention better. Um, that doesn't make me right or doesn't make this form the right way to do it. It's just my way to do it. A lot of forms will stop that end right on the line. Um, a little bit more pen manipulation version is that single stroke or close to a single stroke. Come down, come over, lift your pen to one corner, come up. And then once you get to the top here, you can actually, ah, let me start over. And you can actually just kind of leave it there. And then this comes across all the way, kind of like you might for an H and then down. Ah, my pen is not doing what I want it to do. Which means my fingers aren't moving right. It's not the pen's fault, it's mine. Over, up. And so that's very much more um, what the one that Drogan shows us. Um, I actually have a preference. Kind of for that. Um, but of all of these, I think this one shows better. This one for me is just more fun. Um, but it gets lost in translation. And so um, if I know I'm going to be doing it for some doing a whatever I'm writing for somebody who is not familiar with the scripts, um, I will probably choose this one more. Um, this one I got directly out of a manuscript, um, 1450 French. I forget where it was, uh, but I have pictures of it. Um, the the uh, It's in the Lily Library. All right, so the letter O um, is a little ornamental, a little knot, um, and it'll look a lot like the uh, some of the other Gothics. Nice big round in the O. 
And this O is not closed. You can close it. There's nothing wrong with closing it. This version just isn't. And so this kind of resembles that S or the F, um, except instead of pulling it straight down, you go ahead and bring that over. Uh, and then it's up here just above it, by above this line by about a half a nib width. And then you complete that circle. Um, you can make this bigger, wider. Um, and like I said, you can also close it. Um, if I close it, I actually come up here to close it, come down. Um, and do that. Um, that kind of has an oniony shape to me, and it to me feels like it's going to fall over um, because of this spot here. Um, so you could bring it out more, but you can kind of see how it starts to get fussy and futsy and it doesn't look as good anymore. Um, so I tend either um, to go ahead and bring it this way. Um, and the other option, so it doesn't do that, but this is actually the period thing. I am not controlling my pen well today. Is instead of doing the swish swish, if I really want to know, I'll do that. But at that point, I've lost my point. Mm -hmm. And so that's really not the option for Batard. Uh, there are gothics you can get away with that with. But for me, Batard is just not a good choice. Not that you won't see it. I just find it aesthetically less pleasing. All right, P. P is um, above the baseline. but it does have a descender. Um, and so there's a couple of different ways to, that you can play with this. My preference is kind of to treat it like an N and do that. Um, this can get really, uh, more complicated if you want it to be. And you can pull it up, you can start down here and pull it up and kind of come over here and then bring it down here and do that. And it is kind of amazing how often I see this kind of a P. Um, it is not uh, often as big and wide and strokes like this, um, but it is not this nice open kind of belly that you get. Um, you'll see some version of kind of an S there that kind of looks like the stem of the S. And so it's a perfectly valid. Now Q is not an O with a tail on it. You would think it might be, but it's not. Um, Q is, is open. Um, I like to go to here and then come down and go this way. Um, there's a lot where you'll see it's actually, it actually comes to here and then does that. I don't like that as much. That tall S. and then close it, and then put your tail on it. Can you do it more like an O and put a tail on it? Well, yeah, you could, um, but they didn't. I've, I've never seen a capital Q in Bastarda that looked like an O. I'm not saying that it's not out there because there's so many different kinds. I'm, you know, there's just so much, it's very, very possible that it's there. I've just never seen it. R. Um, again, you could pull a line here if you wanted to. 
You notice how it breaks the stem, okay? And that is the R. Um, do you have to break the stem? No, you can stop here if you want. Um, one of the fun things you can do to play with this a little bit, and this is, uh, let me, <laughs> it's not just, see how there's a difference here? I come here and I bring it up. This is a bring it here kind of, and then I let it close itself. And that actually is a little bit quicker, but it, it draws the eye less. Um, instead of coming down, you can, pardon me, instead of making this convex, no, that's concave, sorry. You can bring it out and do this. But when you do that, it starts to look more like a K. Um, and again, you're losing pointedness. So if you do it, bring it up and at least a little bit. And if we bring down that line, I always recommend leaving the foot instead of closing it. And I'm, this line should be straight, by the way. It should not be coming out like that. Um, I think that's kind of pretty. Lots of different ways of playing with things. Sorry, yes. Pierre, Pierre Go ahead. Has a question. He's he's posted the little R closure at the bottom is a little funky. Um, are we talking about the second R? Uh, yeah, the second R where where yeah. that foot at the bottom loops in on itself, and I'm just trying to get that pin motion so it doesn't just look like a big blob. Is what I was when I tried yeah. to duplicate. I got so, a big blob. With it's a little bit hard for me to do it, manipulate the I'm having a hard time with pen manipulation today anyway, and I don't know why. But the um the the the, the parallel pens don't allow as much fun manipulation as dip pens do. Um come down, it's over here. I just come down now. Otherwise, with this stroke, I just bring it up a little bit. With this, I actually am going to push the ink and come up. But to do that, you need to make it a little wider. And sometimes that doesn't work. I got it there just fine. Um, so can you actually, um, on that final stroke, instead of pushing up, can you actually go back to the stem and pull, and pull back it. down? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a, supposed to be a more cursive way of doing it, but it's hard to do with a, with a parallel pen, so I'm not showing it very well. No, that's fine. I, seeing it done and then doing it as an extra stroke down from the stem does make it look a lot neater a couple of times I've tried it. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing to always remember about calligraphy. It's not something that, I, that, I've, been, that I've said lately. Um, as long as you get it, looking the way it's supposed to look, then you did it correctly. You may have not done it the most efficiently, but you did do it correctly. And sometimes we lose sight that efficiency um, does not mean, more efficient does not mean more correct. It just means more efficient. Oh, one other question real quick before we move on. Huh? Um, when you did that second light line on paralleling the stem, Right there, yeah. Did you use, do you just use the, the corner of the nib or you actually use the whole flat of the nib? And no, you use the corner of the nib. And that's for dip ink or parallel pen. Um, you you want to use that corner. And usually what ends up happening with a dip pen is that you've come over and you rested here long enough that there's going to be a little bit of extra ink up here. And you can just catch that with the corner of your nib and start pulling it down. With the parallel pens, it's there. These are designed to be written on the corner. So with the parallel pen, it's very, very easy to do. Um, with the dip pen, a little bit more complicated, but it's really not that hard. Got it, thank you. Welcome. 
Yeah, like I said earlier, um, before class got started, I am looking, uh, we, we have had uh, high winds and we're we are forecast to get 65 mile an hour winds up to. Um, so when my phone beeps, I'm checking it in case it is, hey, look, you're under, you're under a watch. But no, that's not what that was. All right, so the letter S. Um, there's this S, which um, I don't hate anymore. I used to. Um, and there's another S, which I like less. <laughs> um, but um, they're actually both pretty neat in the, if I stop trying to, you know, hate on them, they're actually pretty cool. So the first stroke is, it's this stroke, but you continue it. And I, you can't see what I was pointing to. Yeah. It's that first entry stroke here, right? Except I just make it longer. Okay. And the second stroke is actually not that complicated. Just pull it down. There we are. Start over here, over here at the edge. Let's see if I can get my fingers out of the way and do this. And pull it to up here. That's a pretty simple stroke. And then you actually start the last stroke up here, bring it down, and then aim for that corner. Now, I made this a little shorter than I should have. So this looks kind of like a Nike swish, even though it's not supposed to. So now I'm gonna get my fat fingers in the way. And that's a bit more wide, a little bit more open, and I missed. Um, but you get the idea with this S. It's actually a pretty quick S, very simple, and it works. There's another S that they use, and essentially it's a doubling of strokes. Start off with the same, bring this down a little bit, and just double the stroke. Bring this down like you would. Um, but go ahead and bring it down into that more S shape that we're a little bit more used to. Ignore the bottom line for a second. And connect. Go ahead and bring that down a little if you need to. And connect. There are different ways to do this. I've just found that this is the better way for me. Um, and because of where I'm working, this letter very much looks slanted. Um, and sometimes in Batard, that's okay. And sometimes it's not. Uh, just to remain consistent. So if you make a slanted S, make sure you wanted it that way. Um, and if you don't want the S to look like it's leaning forward, then don't. Uh, so in other words, whatever it is you do, do on purpose. T is kind of fun. Um, Go ahead. On, on your last S, um, yes. So the, 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 center, the center stroke, that one, yes. If you actually pull it over so that you line up with the top, right, it won't fall over as much. If you remember to eyeball that top finish, you want to be able to finish, uh, yes, like that. Yeah. And, and because that will straighten it out. So it's not leaning. Yep. That's the, if you find yourself with really, with letters which are really have a lean to them, that's one of the first things that you can look at. Yep. And the other thing is, don't start behind this yeah. line. Yeah. And I broke both of those rules. Again, if you want it to lean, okay, but just make sure it always does. Mm -hmm. um, and there are examples that you will see of leaning. Um, oh, I'd forgotten this one. So on Drogan's S, on Drogan's page 159, you get all the capitals. Um, but he shows an interesting exemplar from a period piece on page 158. And I, I, I have to show this one. 
Um, it is, it's fun for me because of how it's created, not because I like it. Aesthetically. Um, aesthetically, I find it a bit ridiculous. All right, so we're here, we do that. This one actually ends up coming all the way over here like this. And then all of a sudden, this. And that's an S. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty ridiculous. It looks more like a G to me. But hey, if it works, it works. All right, so T. This is a kind of a swoopy whoop de doo T. Um, come above, come down at about a 60 to what I say three quarters of the way. And then you've got that wonderful thing. Um, it kind of looks like an upside down seven, a scythe, different ways of looking at it. We're not done yet. We come back up and we pull this down and make it pretty. Um, now, it's really interesting about, oh, geez, about 10 years ago, um, I got to witness a fun little discussion um, between various uh, laurels in calligraphy when I was living in the Middle Kingdom. And the discussion was centering around, because, you know, we get to be nerdy about this stuff every once in a while. Should this spine for the T have started up here, or should it have started here and been pulled down? Um, and so let me show you what happens when you do the other way, because I started it above. I don't like it as much. Not saying it's wrong, I just don't like it as much. All right, you. My paper's having trouble getting to where it needs to go. There we go. So U is actually pretty straightforward. Come up over and make that bottom bucket part of the U. And you can always have fun with the tail over here. Um, and then this is really straightforward, just kind of up and connect. It's not a complicated U. You can close it more. You can make it a little more pointed if you want. It's not going to hurt. Um, I have two different ways I do the V. Um, and the first way that I do the V is a bit more angular, the way that kind of kind of like Hedrogan shows it. It has a little bit more to it. It almost looks like a closed O. Come on, pen. Huh. I might be running out of ink. So if you think you're going to run out of, you're running out of ink, go ahead and take the pen apart in this case, and then look and see what you got left. And the answer is yes. In fact, I am starting to run out of ink. So I'll switch pens. It'll just be bigger. So my nib size almost is now a six instead of a 3.8. So things are changing a little. Um, so with the V, you've got that one. I actually prefer this V. Now I'm not gonna go all the way up to eight. And this V might look pretty familiar to you. 
let me get used to this pen a little bit better. Oh, come on. There we go. I would like to make it a little bit wider, but that's kind of the V that I prefer. I prefer this. There we go. Um, is V period for a capital uh, in this script? Yes. W. It's almost an upside down M. Pretty straightforward. All right. The X, if you remember from the minuscules, the X is just the O done in reverse. This doesn't change much with this. Except we're going to go well below the line because we want to draw the attention. Give it the tail. This stops there. And we can have some fun over here with the tail as well. And then they cross their X. So pretty fun. The Y is a lot like the V. Except now you get to put a tail on it. If you want to, you can make the second stroke of the Y more angular. But it's can not. We see, can we see the bottom of the Y? Oh, there. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Didn't know it was out of, out of screen. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. So, and you might notice I missed here. Um, so, yeah, one more time. Better. And then the Z is to me a Z that we've been seeing forever in minuscules and majuscules. Um, I think it's kind of funny how Z really likes to stay the same. And then you can make the tail and do all sorts of whatever you want with it, kind of. And that's the Z. And we have done N through Z now. Any questions? Okay. I don't see anything popping up in chat. Um, are there anything somebody would like to see again or get a more in depth on? Could you put a K and an R next to each other? Just so I'm, I'm ah, looking ah, back at ah, my Right? So make sure I can get those two straight separate. Yeah, so the difference between K and an R, as the quick, easy way, is this thing. The R comes this way, the K comes up and goes over. It otherwise, pretty much looks the same. Okay. Oh, got it. Okay, it's that flag at the top, and it's got more of an, a real ascender. Yep. R. Now, some scripts are going to have a difference here as well. Um, if I'm doing this for somebody that I know is not familiar with uh, periodness or doesn't necessarily want strict periodness, I'll actually pull the R under a little bit instead of bringing it out. Um, but honestly, it should be, you know, I, I'm not going to write cobalt or I'm not going to write robald when I mean cobalt. So, you know, some of it they can pick up through, you know, whatever this is, whatever the word is, context. Yeah, 
that's pretty much the difference between the two letters. Um, also, the K here is a bit smaller than this R. This is going to be bigger. But if you're not looking at them right next to each other, you're, you're not going to see that difference. Yep. No, that's a question I get a lot, actually. All right. Any others? All right. And with that, I think we can go ahead and stop recording.